Hi, how's it going? Uh, I'm Coach Darren Sandvig. I've got uh, my kids here with me. This is Aiden. This is Caleb. And uh, we're all swimmers. Um, these guys swim for Golden West Swim Club. And um, I'm one of the coaches over there. And like many of you guys who are swimmers as well, you're probably without a place to practice right now. And that can be very difficult. We understand that. Um, so we thought we would share with you some of the things that we're doing as a family to help us keep in shape uh, so that when we do get back into the pool, hopefully in a short time, that uh, we will feel like we uh, are still in shape and can still do the things that we want to do when we hit the pool. Though it might be a little bit of a struggle to get that feel for the water back for a couple days, at least we won't be totally and completely out of shape. So um, while we're doing uh, this type of workout, uh, please keep in mind that at no time is this an obligated workout for anybody. These are just suggestions that we're doing. Uh, we hope that you guys have already come up with some suggestions of your own for your family to stay in shape during this time. Uh, I'd love to hear some of those suggestions. If you'd like to uh, send those suggestions to us, it'd be great. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to show you what we're doing. If you'd like to join, you can. Uh, feel no obligation. If you want to skip out on any piece of the workouts that we're doing, just go ahead and skip out on them. If you're not comfortable with something, it hurts or it's not feeling right, just don't do those things. We want you to be safe and we want you to be healthy and uh, do the right things for what your body is capable of doing. So I'm going to try to show you all the things that we're going to do and show you modifications that can be done to help all levels of swimmer and all levels of athlete kind of enjoy this time of uh, being uh, active together. And um, without any further ado, I think I'll get started with the things that we're going to use today to kind of help our workout get going. One of the things that we're going to use eventually is going to be a, a workout mat. We're going to each have a, a, yoga, a yoga mat um, to uh, lay down. That way we have a soft padding for our backs. Uh, we're also going to be probably using a uh, pull buoy. You'll understand why in just a little bit. And then another thing that we're going to use is going to be stretch cords. And most swimmers, I think, have stretch cords. If not, this might be one of those things that you know, a few bucks spent on Amazon and have it delivered to you since they're still delivering stuff uh, still. Uh, you can maybe get um, some stretch cords delivered to you. Uh, I don't know of any particular uh, brand. The, uh, the one that my son Aiden has over here has like a protective coating over it on the band, uh, bandy part. This one's just kind of an open band too. And they both have handles. Um, but you could just use um, some of that stretchy, what do you call that stuff? The, like mom uses for the boy students. Elastic. Elastic, like elastic band or whatever like that. That, that works really well too. Um, if you have pull-up bars, those are a really good source of uh, doing some kind of swimmery pull type of motions. Uh, we're going to be doing most of that stuff using these, these uh, stretch cords. Alright, so at any rate, we're going to get going with uh, our kind of warm-up. If you're doing it like us, early in the morning, it's a little bit chilly. We've got the heater going on over here. Um, so if you hear a little fan in the background, that's what it is. It's just a little chilly in the, uh, in the garage in the morning. And we're going to start off with some warm-up motions, and then we're going to go through some stretches, and then we'll get into some of our more uh, intense type of stuff. Okay? And so we're going to start... What's that? Make sure you oh, have yeah. water, too. Make sure you got water. Thank you. That's perfect. All right, so we're going to start off with just a light jog in place, get our bodies kind of warmed up. We don't want to start off getting cold muscles stretched out. That's never a good thing. And just kind of go light and easy right here. You don't have to do anything heavy. You're just kind of lifting up your feet. Stay on the balls of your feet when you're doing this. Keep your arms bent, relaxed, loose. Just kind of feel good. Okay? And then as we get a little bit more warmed up, we can lift our knees up a little bit higher. Okay? Just get help stretch out those hamstrings a little bit more. Kind of engage our abs a little bit more. Okay? You can use your hands and you can balance with your arms. Okay? Now bring that back down. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up with our heels. I call them butt kickers, okay? We're just going to bring your heels up towards your butt like this. That's going to help stretch out the front part of our legs, the quads. And then jog it out. One of my next ones that I'm going to do is called the uh, skiers, cross-country skiers. It's one of my favorite exercises. Now, when you're doing this, it's important that you're landing on both feet at the same time. You'll see how I'm just stepping forward and back, forward and back. And you gotta just line up your arms to go match your legs. This is gonna get shoulder activation, warming up our shoulders. Now jog in place. We're gonna 
warm up our arms a little bit, so we'll drop and do five push-ups. So go ahead and do push-up position. So Caleb's going to show you a modification here. So since Caleb is smaller, he might not be able to do push-ups as well. His upper body strength might, might not be as developed. So he's going to drop down to his knees. So that reduces the total load that he's carrying. And so now his body is staying straight. That's very, very important. Hands should be underneath his shoulders. And then he'll do his push-up there. Aiden's going to do a full body push-up. So he's on his hands. And they'll just go five push-ups at their own pace. Go ahead, guys. See how they're going full range of motion if possible. Keeping the body straight, very, very important. We don't want to bend our hips. Show them what bent hips look like. So when we bend our hips, this is something you can do, but you're not doing a, a self service because you want to carry a little bit of that weight on your body. Okay, so keeping your body straight is good. Once you're done with those five, you can jog back in place. If at any time you're doing this, you're like, I'm lost, I'm not sure what we're doing, just jog in place. Keep that heart rate moving during this time. It's very important. Jumping jacks are next. Full range of motion. And jog in place. And shake it out, shake it out. All right, we're gonna start off stretching out our hamstrings now. So we're gonna go wide step, make sure that your feet are parallel to each other. Inhale your arms up. And exhale, arms go wide, back is strong, head is up. Until you hang all the way down. And then just hang here. Now, we have our uh, legs straight when we're doing this. And you see that Kim's got a pretty wide stance here. Uh, you, you can go wider, but that's going to be more of a groin stretch. We were trying to do our hamstrings here. And if you're having trouble reaching the ground with a nice flat back, what I recommend is grab one of your full buoys out of your swim bag. And you can put it down there, and that gives you kind of a shorter base to reach for. That can kind of help if you have a little bit of tightness in your hamstrings. Um, if you want, you can always just hang your arms together like this. You can just hang your, your body down, or you can touch the floor. Whichever one feels good for you. You kind of us all just don't bounce, you know, when you're doing this. You're kind of just holding this position for about four breaths. And after your fourth breath, is that about four? Mm -hmm. Deep breath in. And then exhale and go over towards your right leg. Keep your legs straight when you're doing this. We're just going to focus on one of our hamstrings now. Reaching for that foot. Trying to bring your chest towards your thigh. And after our fourth breath there, take a deep breath in, inhale. And then exhale over to the other side. Here we go with a deep breath in. Exhale and try to bring your chest a little closer. Deep breath in. Exhale and get a little closer. Deep breath in. Exhale a little closer. Last deep breath. Exhale back towards the center. You should feel like you can go a little farther down now. So now what we'll do is we'll go to our groins. We're going to do what I call the Spider-Man. So you can sometimes bring your knees a little bit closer, your legs a little closer. Bend down to one side. We're going to go back, to back, uh, back and forth on this one. So just kind of my elbows are on the inside of my knees so I can press my knee out. Kind of help stretch out in here. And we're just going to shift our weight to the other side. Same thing over here. And we're just going to go back and forth. Real gently, really slowly. We're in no rush. We're trying to just w wake up these morning muscles so that they can be ready to go. And back. And back. And we'll let that go. We'll come on back up. So now we're going to go to a hamstring stretch of a different type. This is going to be a standing split leg hamstring stretch. Just kind of step forward, normal size step, nothing big. And line up your heels with each other. Make our legs straight and straighten our hips out. So you feel that scissor between the legs. And you inhale your arms up like we did before. And exhale over that straight front leg. And again, as you come down, you can rest your hands on your uh, leg. If you want to reach for something, you can reach for a um, pull buoy. If you're really tight, you want a little bit shorter of a reach to go to, you can always use your roller if you have one of these for the team. So 
So you can just kind of go down to that. And that gives you something to work from. And then as you inhale and exhale, you can bend your arms, let yourself get a little bit lower at your own pace, a little bit more safely and more comfortably. Now when you come back out of this, after your last breath, bend your knee and stand up. That will kind of protect your lower back. We'll switch to the other leg and do the same thing over there. So once again, <coughs> inhale your arms up. You see that Caleb's holding on to his full body, so he's got it with him when he bends down. And then exhale, wide arms over that straight front leg, down as far as you feel comfortable. And then go through about four breaths in that position. Inhale. Exhale and get a little bit lower. Inhale. Exhale a little bit lower. Keep that front leg straight. Inhale. Exhale a little bit lower. You can probably go sideways on the uh, when you get to that. You want to do two things? I like that. And bend the knee and stand on back up. Very good. Go to our quad stretch. So it's just standing quad stretch. Don't let this be about balance. Uh, if you need to help, have help balance, you can use your neighbor, right? You can. Uh, hopefully you guys are working out as a family, that'd be cool, right? Or you got a chair nearby, or a little brother, or something like this, a dog that's going to sit still for you. And just hold that position there. And if you want, you can even lean a little bit forward and pull that leg up a little bit higher. And we'll let that go, we'll switch to the other leg. And we'll let that go. All right, so we'll go to arms next, get our arms warmed up. So we'll start off with just a normal arm circle. Let's go forward. Getting that flexibility and that shoulder rotation going, getting that blood flowing into the shoulder as well. Let's go backwards. And we'll switch the other arm. And we'll go backwards. And now the ever impressive, both arms both ways. So when you're doing this one, if you're having a hard time, you know sometimes little kids have a hard time with this, moms, dads, you can help them out. Uh, one of the ways I help teach kids how to do this, a switch, is if they're having trouble figuring it out, I'll stand in front of them. You can go slower a little bit, Caleb. I'll stand in front and then I'll push one hand forward and pull the other hand uh, back or uh, the opposite of what I just said push one hand back and pull the other arm forward That kind of helps them get the feel of it once they get going around a couple times and they start to figure it out on their own And then switch the other way You might have to help them with that switch Good. And one more switch Great, so now we're gonna go with some huggers just hugging it out here. And now we go to the world's biggest fan. So you're gonna go up. Yeah, reach, reach, reach. And then kind of bow down and pull back like you're doing some butterfly. You can call these butterfly extremes or something like that, all the way back up. Reach, reach, reach. Like you're trying to touch the back of the room. And then go forward like you're finishing your butterfly. Press, 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 like you're trying to test the ceiling behind you. Up back one more time. Reach, 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 reach. And then forward again, so they're trying to test the ceiling behind you. Very good, snap back there, right? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go through our uh, first couple motions. The first motion we're gonna do, or the first uh, exercise we're gonna do now is gonna be a normal push-up, okay? So we're gonna get these guys set up. I'm gonna have Caleb set up sideways so we can demonstrate how to modify a push-up in case you can't do your own body weight, which is normal. A lot of kids can't do their own body weight in the beginning because they lack that strength uh, to body weight ratio. And then as you get stronger, then of course you can start moving to a full push-up position. Uh, Aid's gonna to go to the full push-up position. So when we're going into position here, we're going to make sure that our arms are straight underneath our shoulders. Oh, yeah, don't forget to get some water every so often. You don't want to get dehydrated when you're out here. It's very important to stay hydrated while you're doing this. Don't drink a lot of water at any given time, though, especially if it's really, really early in the morning. You kind of got to go slow into it, okay? So we're going to start off 
With our push-up position, our hands are going to be right underneath our shoulders. Bodies are going to be straight. That's so critical that your body is straight and you're not hinged at your hips. Bent hips means that you're not going to be doing any work for your core muscles. When we do push-ups, it's a full body exercise. We really want our body straight so that it's strong all the way through and we're working those core muscles. So you see that Caleb's going to do a modification, doing push-ups from his knees, but his body is straight. He's keeping it all straight through here. His head is in line with his spine and he keeps his vision looking straight down. And Aiden's going to go ahead and do the same thing full body. And whenever you do it, go ahead guys. Whenever you're doing push-ups at home on your own, ever, you know, whenever you're doing some sort of like body weight exercise, it's probably just a good idea to go to your maximum reps and no more. Is once you lose technique, once you start to lose form on your push-up, you're done. You don't want to practice doing anything incorrectly because that's just going to develop bad musculature and bad habits. So once you've gotten your max, you're like, hey, I can't go anymore, that's fine. Stop right there and then just wait until everyone else in your group catches up to you. And then when you move on to the next uh, uh, workout, you work, move on together. Good? Good? What's nice is that you write down how many you got. These guys will probably write that down so that they have a record. Uh, that way when you come back to the same exercise again, you have somewhere to kind of say, hey, look, this is what I was able to do before, and now I'm going to try to make that same goal again. So all you need is a sheet of paper, and you can write down like a couple columns, like push-up number, uh, what style of push-up. We're going to show you a couple different styles of push-ups today uh, in today's uh, practice with the Sandvigs. Uh, but anyways, that's one style right there. All right, as promised, we're also going to use our uh, stretch cords now. So what we're going to do with this move is we're going to do a, a wide pull. Uh, so Caleb and Aiden have both hooked their uh, stretch cords onto these hooks from the ceiling. Aiden's going to go down to his knees because he's pretty tall, so it's a short grip, uh, a short distance. Caleb's not as tall, so he can get a good pull right away. In fact, why don't you go to your knees too? You might get a little bit more out of the coat, drop all the way down. Yeah, I think you'll be okay. So these are just those hooks that you can screw into the ceiling. Make sure you screw them into a beam and not just into drywall ceiling, right? And they're going to be working on getting that breaststroke style pull down or a butterfly style pull down. Elbows are high when they're doing that pull getting that good swimmer catch position. And you can do this as a certain amount of pulls that you want to try to achieve. Uh, if you want to, you can also go for a timed amount of time. Um, we're going to just let them go ahead and just do as many as they feel like they can do at this point as a demonstrator. You notice that his, his grabbing the water, he's moved, he's moved back as well to kind of get a little bit more resistance. But he's got that water grab, he's got that catch position, his elbows are high, so is Caleb, it's really good, and they're finishing through strong down in here. Now, Aiden's got a little stiffer arm when he does it, so he's going to work his lats a little bit more. Caleb's doing a little slight bend of the arm, which is going to work his triceps more. Nothing's wrong with doing either way. Uh, it's just like a slight modification on his end. He might not be strong enough to keep his arms totally straight and do this, especially now that he's on his knees. So make sure that you just modify so that you can do it at your level. So Caleb's going to just write down how many he's done, and then that's going to be his challenge to try to get that many again in the future or to surpass that. All right, so for this one, this is going to be a military-style push-up, or sometimes called the cricket push-up or the grasshopper push-up. And the idea is on this one that you're keeping your elbows close to the body. A normal push-up kind of works the more of the chest, uh, part of the core muscles. Uh, this type of military-style or cricket-style works mainly a tricep style press, which is a very important muscle for us swimmers. So these guys are going to go ahead and set themselves up for their push-ups. And again, whenever you're doing push-ups, you're going for maximum reps of your own body weight. Caleb's going to show you the modified form. Aiden's going to do full body. Go ahead, boys. So keep your elbows a little bit closer to your body. Keep your hands at the stance a little bit closer. Yep, and bring your elbows straight back towards me. That's it. And then right back up. That's it. Good. Uh, if it's tweaky on your... Uh, wrists at all. You can always go to your fists if you want, uh, which sometimes helps. And I usually put my fists in line like this. That kind of keeps my elbows in the right position. And you drop your elbows down and go right back up on your fists. Sometimes that's easier to do on your, uh, on your wrists if you're having wrist issues. Another way to do this is if you do have like some weights at home, uh, which we do have, and I can show you that. Keep going, boys. If you do have some weights, like some hand weights, dumbbell style, your weights can be used as a way to grip. So, like I could give this to Aiden here, 
and you can grip onto those things, and that's kind of nice for your wrists, so you can kind of hold on and not tweak your wrists so much. Right? Great position. So you see that his body's straight. He's looking straight down while he's doing them. Right? As soon as his body starts to bend or if you get a sway back, you're done. Your technique is now to the point where you're not benefiting yourself. So just make that as your number that you've got, however many that was. Write it down and make it a challenge for next time to beat that by one or two. All right, for this next one, we're going to be doing a, uh, a pull, kind of a reverse grip position, and we're going to be pulling the bands towards our chest. Caleb's just going to be working on that pull right here, so it's kind of a bicep uh, pull. And then Aiden's going to be doing a more advanced move, which is going to be a, trice, I mean, a bicep pull, and then a tricep press as a finisher. Go ahead and show them, guys, boys. So you see that Caleb's just going straight up to his arms like this and then pulling down, almost like doing like a chin-up on a chin-up bar. If you do have a chin-up bar at your house, you can just do reverse grip chin-ups at this point. And scooting back just a little bit, he wants a little bit more pull. And if you want more resistance, you can just do like they've done. They just scoot back farther if you want a little bit more work. If you want a little less work, get up closer so that there's less pull on there. Good, so he's got a good finish. He's coming in towards his chest and then pulling down. So you're getting a little bit of a bicep pull and then a tricep fix. And then Caleb, because he's got shorter arms, is getting a pretty decent bicep pull on this one. All right, on this next one, we're gonna go to a wide position push-up. It's gonna really focus our efforts on our pecs. Okay, so you see that Caleb's got a wide position outside of his, his pad there. Just as long as you're outside of your shoulders, really. Uh, everyone's going to have different sized shoulders. So it might be too wide to go way out here like this for someone really small. Just kind of keep it in your, in your zone of just wider than your shoulders. And just push up until you cannot do anymore. You notice that Caleb's doing it from his knees. Aiden's doing the full body. Maximum reps. And then write down how many you've done. Keep a record. All right, for this one, this is going to be like an inline pull position. So you're going to have your hands gripped on your uh, cords. You're going to try to keep your hands close like you would if you were trying to pull yourself out of the pool and do like a wallop kind of thing. Wallops, in case you're not a real uh, familiar with that, is just when you're claw crawling out or climbing out of the pool. So on this one, again, same as we did before, we want to make sure our elbows stay high so we're getting a good pull position like we would in a swimmer. Aiden's going with his flat hands, which is something that he likes to do. And then Caleb's kind of doing it with more of a uh, traditional grip position so he feels a little bit more secure on those pulls. So Caleb, make sure that your hands stay close together as you pull all the way down through the center and down towards your knees. Good. This is a lot like when you would pull down and finish here on a breaststroke pull down into this position. And this position here is also a good catch position that we're trying to achieve. So again, maximum reps on this one until you feel fatigued. Or you can go for a certain specific amount of time of consistent pulls. Real good. See how hands hands are nice and close together, looking really good. Excellent. Keeping the elbows high and finishing down in that press. Very good. Notice that both of them kind of finish with their shoulders up, which is a very traditional breaststroker position for a breaststroke pull down. Caleb's a very good breaststroker, so he does tend to press with his as his shoulders in close to his ears. Very good for that real true breaststroke streamlined position. So you see how Caleb kind of got a little fatigued and his hands came up rather quick. Make sure that when you're doing this, you're coming up slow and in control. You don't want to let the bands have control of you. You want to be in control of them. So at this point, we're just taking a little bit of a water break. Uh, we've gone through a couple different motions now. And uh, so we want to just kind of make sure we're hydrating throughout this time. And that's what the boys are doing here. Caleb's writing down some of his data. And then again, don't drink too much at any given time. Uh, just get enough to kind of keep yourself hydrated. And then we're going to get into the next motion. So our next motion, and I'm going to prep them for this one, is a decline push-up style position. Uh, if you have a chair, 
or a ladder that, you know, one of those little step stool ladders or something like this. Um, I just happen to have a bench, so we'll, we'll use a bench because it works better for what we have going on here. And you're going to go ahead and put your feet up on the bench. And in this one, you can actually bend your hips if you'd like to. If you want to get more of a true decline position, um, for your, or it's like kind of an incline, I guess, but the body declines. So if you want to go to more hips up, you can go higher with your hips and press your face towards the ground and then back up. If you want to do a little less intense, then drop your butt down, and it's more like a traditional push-up then. So it's kind of up to you to modify this uh, to what the intensity level that you can manage. If you want to go super intense, go real high with the hips, and then you can also lift one leg straight up like this, that adds more weight to push down and come back up with, okay? So it's all up to you and your levels, your skill ability. If this is too much, you can always, always go to your knees as well. So Caleb, can you show them a modified knee position, bring your knees up onto the bench for me? Oh. So Caleb's gonna go to his knees on the bench, which drastically reduces the amount of weight that he's carrying, and then he can kind of do this type of a push up here. Again, a chair, a bench, uh, an overturned bucket would work for this, as long as that thing's gonna hold, hold position for you while you're doing this. Maximum reps is what you're going for, as we said before. Make sure you write down how many you've done. And whether or not you used your leg, or whether or not you have bent hips. Again, in this position, the bent hips actually adds more pressure towards that press. All right, so the boys are getting their uh, bands down now. I am too short. <laughs> there you go. So this next one, uh, we're gonna call the, the tech suit pull. Uh, it's kind of my little name for it. It's, you know how hard it is to pull up a tech suit over your hips, so the boys are standing on their uh, cords now. Again, you can adjust how much resistance you have by how far apart you keep your feet. The farther apart, obviously the shorter your band is gonna, or your stretch band is gonna be, and so you're gonna have more resistance, the closer your feet are together the less resistance. So you guys gotta kinda of find your own spot that's gonna challenge you, yet make it so that you can manage. So right now they're doing the tech suit pull, which is basically keeping their back straight, body straight, eyes forward, and they're just gonna be kind of pulling up towards their armpits, keeping their elbows pulled back. You see his elbows are kinda of coming back towards me, so you can feel that behind into your uh, shoulder blades area right here. So the shoulder blades should be pinching inwards, elbows coming back like a cricket leg, and you just kind of go for max reps again, as many as you can do. Real good, keep your eyes going forward. That's good, excellent work. Chest is forward, excellent, good. Make sure you're breathing while you're doing these exercises. Caleb's gonna write down how many you got to. Aiden's gonna keep going until he gets to fatigue, and then he'll stop and write down his number two. Next, we're gonna do uh, kind of like a uh, chest to hands push up. So, you're gonna make a little heart shape with your hands or do a heart to heart push up. So, you make a little heart shape or a diamond shape that I've seen, and that keeps your elbows uh, sticking out to the side, hands close together. So, it really focuses a lot on that tricep press. Caleb's going with his knees and he's going with a wide stance because your hands are close together. So, you're kind of tippy. So, you kind of want to go wide if you're gonna be like Aiden and go full body. He's going to go wide with his feet too for balance. Once you get really good, go ahead boys, that German face. Once you get really good, you got real strong core strength. If you want to go close together with your feet, that's okay. But just in the beginning, start off with where you got a little bit more safety and security. And you're just trying to get as close to your chest as you can with your hands, whatever you're able to do. Again, maximum reps until you can. not And then at that point, you're all done. Write down how many you got. How many did you get there, Caleb? Six. Got six. So next time he's going to try for seven. Eight, how many did you get? Same. Got six. six. And he went full body. He's going to write that down. Caleb will make sure that he writes down he did knees. Eight will make sure he writes down that he did a full body. Okay, our next one is going to be good for um, all those kids that need to do a little bit more yard work now. So we're going to do a lawnmower pull on our stretch cords. So you kind of have to maybe play around with your stretch cords to find what works for you with regards to length. But essentially you're going to stand on it. I recommend that you hold the other side just as well in case it kind of slips away from your foot. Yeah, you won't get uh, the whole cord coming up in your face. At least that'll hold it a little bit more. And anyways, you're going to pull up like you pull a lawnmower. 
and you come back down. Pull up like you're pulling that lawnmower cord and go back down. Again, maximum reps, figure out what you've got on this side, right? And then try to match that on the other side once you finish that one side. Do one side at a time, it usually helps that way. Count how many you've got and then try to do it on the other side. Uh, you might find you're stronger on one side than the other. And that's pretty common for sports like tennis and baseball, where one arm tends to be the dominant arm. Hopefully you're not that way as a swimmer, you should have equal strength on both sides. Try to be in control going back down. You're kind of coming down a little bit fast, so come up slow, come down slow, yeah? And in fact, try to go up fast and down slow if you really want to get some strength. There we go, good. All right, so this next one's gonna be like a dive bomber or under the fencer. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. So we're gonna start off with that A-frame shape to our bodies. The boys are gonna have their legs wide for balance. Hips are gonna be high towards the sky like they were doing that. Uh, downward dog position, go a little bit uh, less wide with your legs here. No, little, there we go, and higher hips. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that there's like a fence in front of your head here that you're gonna slide underneath and look, and then come back, or kind of like a dive, plane dive bombing the ground and then kind of coming right back. So it's like a chaturanga motion if you've ever done any yoga. They'll slide forward, go ahead and slide forward, boys. And they're sliding forward and getting their chest close to the ground and then coming up to this kind of upward dog position. And then to go back, they slide back under the fence to come back to this position. Now, that might be a bit much for the younger kids to come back. Usually they can go forward, no problem. Your shoes coming off there, kiddo? Yes. So usually they can go forward, no problem. Keep going, man, on your own pace. But coming back might be a bit of a challenge. So if you're having a hard time coming back, you can just modify by just shifting back to a downward dog position and then go into that forward position again. And you just go maximum reps as best you can. Ooh, Caleb's going for the big ones, huh? Very nice. Excellent work, very good. And press yourself back. And I really want you to see that sideways, or that swishing motion here that you're trying to go under the fence and come back, hips up. So when they're done, I'm gonna demonstrate what a side position would look like on this one. Good. All right, so here again, from this on the side, a-frame with the body, slide down and forward, come up here, right? And then you're gonna slide backwards, go in the same position, back, right? And you're sliding forward and back, that's one, okay? All right, so this next one, uh, I've got the boys sit, uh, seated on buckets, you can sit on chairs. Uh, we just didn't have any chairs out here in the garage, so. Uh, Caleb is gonna be uh, lifting water bottles, okay? when he's doing this one. So he'll just hold on to the water bottle here on the side like this. That way it's balanced in his hands when he's doing this motion. He's coming up and coming back down. And then Aiden's gonna be doing it with cords. He's kind of, you can adjust how much uh, resistance you have by how far, how far apart your feet are. And his idea is to lift his arms out like he's kind of like getting his arms out of some tar. And then he's gonna lift up past that and come back down, okay? So it's kind of this type of a motion here that you're going for up and then down kind of like keeping the elbows high the whole time you see that Caleb's doing that too that's going to help kind of get this rotators uh, area in here and get your back muscles engaged too you feel that back here Aiden <coughs> no coughing I guarantee you got coronavirus <laughs> Very good. Again, maximum reps on this one. Write down what you did, how much water you used. If you have weights, you can do this with weights as well, or cans of beans, or whatever you got that, you know, liftable. All right, so that's the full circuit for what we're going to do today. Uh, now that we've shown you each little piece and part, uh, we're going to do a lot less talking, a lot more doing. Feel free to join us when we're doing this. We're going to start over again with the uh, regular push ups. Ready, boys? Remember to keep your body straight. Don't drop your head down. You don't want to be hunching like this. You don't want to be butt in the sky. You don't want to be hips down like this. Keep your body straight while you do this. And then write down your reps. OK, 
KFX has wide poles with your hooks. Mm -hmm. Wide poles is next. If you have a pull-up bar, you can just do normal pull-ups on this one, or a wide pull-up if you want. So Caleb's checking to see how many he did the first round, so he can do that same number or beat it, if possible. Again, don't feel bad if you aren't able to. You've already gone through one workout uh, round already, so you might be a little fatigued. If you're not able to meet that, that goal, you're off by a few, don't worry about it. You're working out and someone else isn't. So that means you're getting stronger and they're not. Never feel bad about not being able to make that last one. Know that you did everything you could to get there. Uh, next one is the military style push up. These are those cricket push ups or the Grasshopper, military style. Aiden's using those weights for his wrists. Keeping the elbows in close. Yep, there we go, good. It's more of a tricep press on this one. Try to keep the elbows in close. Yep, good, good, good. Thighs are straight, neck is in straight in line with the body. So this next one's going to be the, you're going to do a pull yeah. to the chest. So you're going to pull to the chest and then finish down here, right? So you went, you were on your knees for this one. I think you were, you were back a little farther, weren't you? Aiden? <coughs> so again, this is going to be kind of a pull towards your chest for Caleb. And it's going to be the same thing for Aiden. He's just going to finish off with that tricep press at the finish. to breathe. Don't hold your breath while you're working out. If it ever gets really, really hard, that's when you need to exhale. It's on that press is when you want to exhale. It's going to help your, your push or your pressing to get to that last little bit out of it. Holding your breath, you're going to hit fatigue a lot faster and you're not going to be able to complete the, as many rounds. Uh, wide push-ups is next. So wide push-up is next. Going back out outside the shoulders. You don't have to go outside of your mat, depending on how big your shoulders are, obviously. You do what you can do, and these guys are going to do what they can do. This is going to be a narrow, narrow pull down. So narrow pull down is the same uh, as like a closed grip type of pull down uh, of a pull apart. So face, uh, hands facing forward, coming in, elbows high, right? You want to have that good swimmer catch position. Keep it narrow, close to the center, center line. There we go, good. Again, Aiden's showing you that kind of flat-handed position, kind of like he's, he would if he was swimming. Caleb likes to do the grip on the bar, or grip on the handles, which is a safer way to go, especially since he's got a lot more resistance uh, for his uh, ability right now with that uh, cable. Remember, keep in control of the cable, don't let the control, uh, cable control you, right? 
you get to where you don't feel like you can be in control, that's when you're done. Feel good. We're going to stop for a little bit of water break right now. We'll go for that decline push up, boys. So we go to a decline push up next. Again, you're in total control here about how much you want to do, how intense you want it to be. Uh, Caleb was going to kind of his knees position, makes it a little bit easier for him and his strength level. Aid's going to a full body position, and if he wants to go even harder than that, he can go to a bent hip position so it's more of a press uh, towards his head. Uh, true decline position. Maximum reps, if you want to increase the uh, weight, you can add a leg. Feel good, Kale, that was nice. What's next, Caleb? Um, oh, um. Tech suit. Time for tech suit. I'll help you, Caleb. So on tech suit pull up, again, you're going to keep your elbows back, shoulders straight and strong. And lift up back, get those elbows come back towards your, uh, the back of the wall here. You'll feel that pinching be uh, between your shoulder blades. That's where you want to feel, right back in here. Just try to, try to squeeze my fingers. There you go, good. That's good, nice. And you want to, if you want to go for a little bit more intensity, you can go for a solid hold and then release. Okay, like Aiden just did there, where he's holding it, kind of an isometric type of motion there. And then coming down. And that does change the intensity right there, right away. Do you feel that right away? Yeah. What's up next, Caleb? Diamond push-up. Yeah, diamond or heart-to-heart push-ups. So the diamonds, hands together in front of your chest, down to your chest, and back up. Go with a wide stance for your knees or your feet for this one. That way you have good balance. It's really good, Caleb. You notice that he's got his spine in line and straight. He's not hinged at the hips. Try to avoid that at all costs. If you're having a really, really tough time, then you can bend the hips a little bit. But if all you're doing is just lifting up your shoulders up and down, you're not going to get as much out of it. Lawn mowers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, one arm at a time on this one. Go with the opposite foot real quick, so switch feet. So what Caleb did is he stepped on with the same side that he's pulling on, which is nothing really wrong with that, but if you want to get a full twist involved and get those back muscles engaged, step on it with your opposite foot and pull up. With, if you're starting with your right hand, for example, step on it with the left. If you're going to switch to the other arm, then step on it with the right and go to your left arm. If you really want to get a good workout on this one, dads, just go out to the lawnmower and empty it of all the gasoline and tell your kid to go mow the lawn. They'll be out there for a while trying to pull on that thing, get that thing to start. Good. Last uh, push that we're going to do after this one is called the dive bomber or the under the fence. Doing a good job, Caleb. Okay, we do two times more. Ooh, twice as many, huh? Wide legs a little bit so you have a good balance. Good, just got that good under the fence position, sliding back. Don't forget to breathe. I want to hear you exhale when you're, pre when you're pressing. 
good. Pitch high, Caleb. Pitch high. There you go. Now slide into that fence and come on back. Really good. Nice. Really good. Excellent work, boys. So seated back flies are next, find a bucket or a chair or a bench, and uh, you did it with um, water, right? So elbows high on this one, lifting up, press it back, like you're trying to test the back of the room with those elbows, with those arms. Try to keep your elbows up and you're doing The nice thing about doing it with water bottles is you can adjust the weight uh, pretty easily. If it's too heavy right away, you can pour some water out. If you want some more weight, fill it up or get a larger water bottle. Uh, cans of uh, beans or that kind of thing work really well too. If you have your own weights, then you can just do it with weights. Great. Now well, that was it. And I uh, hope you guys are out there training and doing some stuff. Uh, we'll be right back at you tomorrow with some more stuff. Uh, tomorrow being uh, Tuesday, at least for us it will be, I don't know when you'll be watching this one, but um, we're going to go two mile Tuesday, so we're going for a little bit of a jog tomorrow, so we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.